What's up guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to a fun little video for Dragon's Dogma that uh, I didn't originally have planned, but uh, I don't know. Every time I play this game I find something new, so I wanted to share some things that you may or may not know. Uh, if you're a veteran to uh, Dragon's Dogma, I would imagine you know a lot of these, but hey, if you don't even know one of them and it helps you out, perfect. Let's uh, go ahead and get on to the things that I wanted to show you. I got a fun one for you guys. Now, there's a move that you can get with the Strider and I think the Ranger, maybe the Assassin, but I think it actually might just be a Strider and Ranger skill. Anyway, whatever, doesn't matter. It's called Skull Splitter or Helm Splitter, whichever one you want to, you know, use. I believe they both work the same way. Anyway, you can use this ability to negate all fall damage. That's right all fall damage. Now, the way it works is you have to actually let the skill itself propel you off of the height that you would like to uh, just survive or not take damage from. And, uh, yeah. So, so okay. It doesn't work if, like, say, you jump and then activate the skill. It doesn't work that way. You have to actually not jump. You have to let the skill carry you over. So if you're traveling in a direction while you use the skill, you can see you can get a little bit of movement back and forth. You're using that movement to initiate the jump of sorts, if you'd like to call it. Whatever. You know what? How about I just show you an example? The biggest fall that I can find in the game, I think, that is still technically within bounds and it doesn't, you know, kill you from going off map or whatever, um, is the Everfall. Very appropriate name. But um, if you utilize the skill, you could do something like this. Bam! And there we go, we're at the bottom of the Everfall. <laughs> so, if you'd like to clear the entire Everfall without having to deal with ogres and, you know, all that other stuff, then feel free to use the skill for that. Um, but, first time through, I would recommend going through the Overfall, or the Everfall, finding all the equipment, fighting all the things that you can, but if you absolutely positively don't want to deal with, you know, traveling down and flipping switches, then there you go, you can get down the Everfall in like two seconds. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys uh, in the next one. I actually don't know how many of these I'm going to be doing, but uh, yeah, I think this is the most fun one to actually uh, to use. But anyway, uh, yeah, see you in the next one. All right, here's another one that probably a lot of people know already, but just in case you're on your first loop of New Game Plus, uh, when you come over here to Black Cat, talk to uh, Mont Blanc over here, or Mont, what Mont Bank, whatever the heck his name is, whatever. Uh, once you go to him and you actually, uh, you know, go to his tools and stuff like that, once you enter New Game Plus, you can start to purchase port crystals. So it'll make it a lot easier, you know, for subsequent travels throughout Grancis. But, uh, yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out. Just, you know, a little, little bit. Next thing you might not have realized. So, uh, eventually you're going to get a quest in the very beginning of the game where you have to escort Madeline to the encampment. Uh... If you want to save a little bit of time while you're actually, uh, you know, doing your little escorts and stuff like that, on occasion she'll get distracted by things and kind of run off. But, uh, yeah, all you gotta do is just, you just grab her. <laughs> you could just, oh, oh, Madeline, calm down. You could just grab her and run off, um, and that'll kind of negate the whole her running off and doing that kind of stuff. Won't save you a whole lot of time, but it's just one of those things you could do if you'd rather not, uh, sit here and have her run off and take forever. So yeah, this is normally what I end up doing in this quest. She doesn't really like it that much, but uh, whatever. <laughs> it's okay. It's like, we're not we're not here for for tourist stuff here, Madeline. We're, we're going. We gotta go. Nope, we're going. We're just we're just going. You're not gonna stop anywhere. Eventually she will get upset with you and uh, you know make you let her go, but uh, you can kinda do stuff to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, just put her down. 
the Duke could stand to the only other problem with this is that uh, you do end up uh, running through a bit of stamina. <clears throat> and uh, it's going to take you a little bit longer to do because I am doing this on a new game plus. So my character does have a little bit more stamina. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> just walk her. Just pick her up and walk her straight to the encampment. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out. All right, here's going to be one that uh, most people, I'm sure, are aware of, but... Just in case you're new and, you know, you thought maybe that this should be a feature. Uh, if you are depositing stuff into your actual uh, inventory, if you go to the category, uh, right here at the bottom you can see options. It says select category. That is not descriptive of what it is at all. When you hit options or start or whatever button it is that you're going to press, uh, what it does is it actually gives you the option to deposit everything in that category all at once. So that way you don't have to sit there and select every single thing individually. So, like I said, most people probably know that one, but um, if not, hey, there you go, congratulations. Now you can uh, be just a little bit faster when it comes to uh, putting some stuff away. Uh, on to the next one. Here's one that I do pretty much every single time I play this game. Uh, this little area here, you uh, you end up coming up on it fairly early on the game, uh, and uh, there's the boulder trap that's way up there. Well, if you happen to be a strider or you know, whatever class that has a, a bow, you can actually shoot those and activate them early. And uh, one of the things you can do, you gotta shoot pretty high up to get it. Come on. Come on. Do it. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Come in. Okay, maybe a little closer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can actually activate those early, and if you can manage to uh, shoot that big boulder without hitting the small ones, it'll actually get stuck behind the uh, the uh, the smaller ones, and then that'll make it so that it won't actually go down and you know hit you and your pawns. But uh, yeah. Just something you can do to uh, potentially avoid that trap. Anyway, on the next one. Alright, here's another thing you might not have known. So, NPCs will walk around on occasion carrying bundles of sticks and scrolls and things like that. Well, if you pick them up or, you know, scare them or whatever, you'll, they'll, uh, they'll drop them. And uh, that also applies towards uh, some other more potentially useful things. You know, like uh, blank scrolls and whatnot. If they drop those, then... Uh, yeah, you can get a kind of an infinite supply of blank scrolls if you want. But anyway, uh, hopefully this helps you guys out. Here's something you may not have known. If, after you defeated the Cyclops and recruited your first pawn at the, the encampment at the beginning of the game, uh, but before you speak with Mercedes and rest and then fight the Hydra, if in between those you go back to Cassidus, uh, you'll actually get a, a cutscene that is pretty easy to miss, especially if it's your first time through. Let's take a look.
So yeah, it's kind of an interesting little cutscene that shows uh, you you actually interact with and talk with Elysian way sooner than you do if you had missed this cutscene. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it just gives a little bit more uh, context into Elysian's character and, and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, hope, uh, hope that was entertaining for you guys. All right, hey, thanks for sticking around this long, if you did. Always appreciate when people watch the uh, videos and all that. But anyway, for the last thing, I just wanted to share kind of uh, where I place my port crystals in-game, generally speaking. Uh, keep in mind, you can only place 10 total uh, port crystals, not including Grand Soren, Cassidus, and Bitter Black Isle. But anyway, I'll show you where they are. Okay. I guess it would be better if I just show you the whole map, right? Okay. So, as I stated, the port crystal in front of Cassidus and the one in Grand Soren do not count. So, don't worry about those. But, all the ones that you personally place in the world, in the overworld, they are, uh, they're all, well, it's up to your decision. But, these are where I like to put some of mine. So, okay. We've got the back entrance to the Witchwood, which, uh... Yeah, that's just mostly for convenience, which is right here with the chest and stuff. But uh, anyway, let's go on to the next ones. So we got uh, outside of the Witchwood. Let's go ahead and head over this away. Over on uh, Bloodwater Beach, I like to place one there because there's a number of escort quests that take you there. And if you can just spawn there, you can, well, pretty good. I put one at the rest camp that's uh, just south of the Ancient Quarry South Entrance. Reason for that is because I use the rest camp here to spawn uh, and farm drakes, which the drake lives over here in the uh, Devil Fire Grove. Speaking of the Devil Fire Grove, I also like to place one just north over here by the uh, by the Shadow Fort. It's good for quests and some escort missions as well. Uh, let's see, where else do I like to put one? Right over here on the Cobalt Coast which is uh, on the Manamiya Trail. Now, this actually is right next to the Mountain Way Castle. It's one of the first places you go to in the beginning of the game when you have to escort the Hydra Head to uh, Grand Soren. So, I find it's convenient. There's other, you know, places, uh, or there's other points in the games where they want you to go here. But, uh, anyway, that, that's, that's a good spot. Let's see. Uh, I like to place one by the Ancient Quarry, the North Entrance. Just, uh... Mostly for convenience. Again, there are places in the story where they tell you to go here, and I don't know, it just seems convenient for me. Another good place, uh, if you don't want to put it here, would be the Abbey, which is right over here. Uh, there's a number of uh, reasons to come over here. One, mostly, is because of an escort quest. But uh, yeah, it can be a little bit of a pain to walk here from uh, Grand Soren sometimes. But uh, yeah, either of these two spots would be good, both pretty close to each other. Okay, continuing on. Like with most people, I like to put one by the Great Wall Encampment because, uh, well, the one of the most important missions in the story goes here, along with uh, entrances to some places like Soul Flayer Canyon, things like that. But uh, yeah, like that one for somewhat obvious reasons. Moving on, I like to place one by Hilfiger Knoll. Reason for that, again, and you're going to keep hearing this, but story missions take us there, and it's just kind of one of those quality of life things. Next up the Healing Spring at the very top of the map, next to the uh, the Blighted Manse. Uh, reason for that is because, I feel like a broken record here, but there is a decent amount of escort quests that want you to go here. Uh, let's see, let's uh, move on south here with one of my final recommendations. It would be right outside of Blue Moon Tower. Now, if it's your first time playing the game, I would not recommend, you know, using the, uh, the free fast travel system that the game gives you with the eternal uh, fairy stone reason for that is because there's a lot of stuff that you should you, you should spend all your time kind of looking around fighting monsters and stuff like that it'll it'll be more fun than just warping around but anyway hopefully uh i don't know maybe some of those ideas that i gave you uh, throughout this entire video could uh, help you guys but uh hey i will see you guys in the next video i don't know when i'm going to be doing more dragon's dogma coverage i mean obviously i'm going to play the sequel but uh 
yeah, I don't know. If I come up with any other m random things that you may or may not know, then uh, I might make another video about it if I can think of enough. But uh, anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode of whatever the heck you want to see on the channel. And uh, yeah, you guys uh, take care. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye.